I'm Valerie Rofberg, and today we're doing an Abstractor tutorial on how to create a new project in Abstractor. So here's the landing page when you go to abstractor.cebm.brown.edu. And from this page, you can either log in, or if you don't have an account yet with Abstractor, you can register for one. If you don't have an account yet, you can click on register here. So once you click on register for an account, it will take you here. All you have to do is fill out each of these fields. Um, create a username that you want to use when you log in and a password and then click sign me up and you will immediately have an account with Abstractor. The question how many SRs have you participated in is asking how many systematic reviews you've worked on in the past and it's for our personal data to know what types of users we have using Abstractor. It's totally okay if you've never worked on a systematic review before. So once you've got an account you will come back to this screen and you can enter in your username and password and click submit to log into your account. Here's the main landing page for Abstractor. From this screen, you can screen abstracts for any of the projects that you've signed up to work on. You can edit projects that you're leading, which is what we'll be talking about today. You can edit your account, change your password, view the help screen if you have any questions about Abstractor, or you can take a quick tour. The top section of this page is work you should be doing which means there are still abstracts that you are supposed to be screening for a given project. So, for example, I have not screened all of the abstracts I'm supposed to for the macular degeneration project. If you scroll down, you can see assignments you have completed. So there's no more screening for you to do on a given project in this field. This tutorial will, will focus on creating a new project that you yourself are going to lead. So in order to do that, you will click on the My Projects tab. And here you can see a list of all of the projects you're leading. You can do, you can change administrative settings for these projects. You can export results. You can look at predictions, which we'll talk about later. Resolve conflicts. Look at which abstracts have been labeled as maybe. Or delete a project if you no longer need that work on here. To create a new project, you'll scroll to the bottom of this screen. and click Start a new project or review. From here, you'll see everything you need to set up a new project in Abstractor. Each review is automatically given a generic name in case you forget to fill out that field, but let's just call this one Abstractor Tutorial Review. If you'd like to enter a project description, that way participants know what this type of project deals with, you can put that in this field. Next, you will upload a file that includes your abstract data. The types of files that you can import here are PMID lists, which are PubMed IDs that were exported from PubMed. You can upload tab-separated files or XML files. And if you want more information on the types of files that you're allowed to upload or that Abstractor will accept, you can click on this link right here, What Can I Import? And this will link you to the section of the help document that gives more specifics on the types of files that are accepted. So let's add a file. My example here is a TXT file that is just a list of PubMed IDs from a PubMed export. Next, you'll want to choose your screening mode. So the two options here are single screen and double screen. Single screen means that each abstract in your review will be seen by exactly one screener. Double screen means that each review will show up on the screens of two screeners, and then there may be conflicts or they may agree, and those things can be dealt with afterwards. It's basically a quality control check to see if screeners are agreeing on whether or not a given abstract should be included in your review. Typically, we recommend double screening as that quality control check, but whatever works for your project, you can choose either. Next, you'll choose how to order your abstracts. Abstractor has a machine learning algorithm that runs in the background. After a sufficient number of abstracts have been reviewed, Abstractor starts to learn from what you've chosen, what you've included, and what you've rejected. And overnight, this algorithm will run, and if you so choose, it will reorder the remaining abstracts by which are most likely to be relevant based on what you've chosen before. 
You might want to choose this to speed up the screening process. We would ne never recommend stopping screening after a certain point if you think the remaining abstracts aren't likely to re be relevant, but you may assume that most of them remaining are not relevant, and so you might move on to your data extraction phase and only screen on weekends. The other option is random. So if you don't want that reordering of abstracts overnight, you can just choose random and they will come up in random order. Next, you can choose a pilot round size. If you're unsure of what a pilot round size is or means, you can click on, huh? And this will explain what a pilot round is. So like it says, in a pilot round, all of your screeners will be looking at the same set of abstracts. This stage is really important if you want to standardize how people are screening and make sure that everybody has the same understanding of your inclusion and exclusion criteria. Typically, we suggest 50 to 100 abstracts to make sure that you're seeing enough variety of the types of abstracts that came out of your search, and you will have seen enough different types of abstracts to sufficiently standardize your inclusion and exclusion criteria and to have enough data on whether you think your screeners are sufficiently synced up and consistent in how they're screening abstracts. It is possible and sometimes likely for more complex reviews to do multiple pilot rounds. So if after 100 abstracts, people are still disagreeing often, you can set another pilot round and do it again and make sure that people have improved. Tag visibility is about whether tags that people have labeled their abstracts with show up to everybody in your screening group or only themselves. We'll talk about tags in the next tutorial, but again, the two options are whether only the person tagging the abstract can see that tag or if they're public to everybody in the project. Generally, we recommend setting this to private because we don't want to have screeners influencing each other's judgment about a given abstract. We want everybody to be independently looking at these abstracts. And so we don't want, if I've labeled something as a systematic review, we don't want that to influence somebody else's judgment about that abstract and whether or not they accept or reject it. Public might be a good setting for a pilot round or if you have a lot of inexperienced screeners on your project, you may want to set this to public to help people along and help them realize things that they may have missed. Once you've decided on all of these things, which can be edited at any point, you will click on Create New Review. Abstractor is now processing the abstracts, and then it will take you to your new review. The length of time that this takes will depend on how many abstracts are in the file that you've uploaded. If there are a lot, it may take a few minutes and if there aren't too many, less than 100, it should be very quick. This is the page that you will come to once your new review project has been created. From this screen, you can invite people by their email to start screening on this project, or you can copy this link and put it anywhere you'd like. You could send a separate email, or you could post it on a website, whatever you'd like to do. And from here, you can go back to your home screen, and this project will appear at the bottom, and you can start to screen your abstracts. In the next tutorial, we'll talk about what to do from this screen and how to actually screen your abstracts for your project. Until next time!